Now, my first guest hosts the world's most popular game show, has been on the telly since Tiz was in the 70s, and for 18 years hosted the live breakfast show on Capital Radio before leaving to seek a new direction. In this case, the North Pole, looking for polar bears. Chris Tarrant. Welcome. Bare necessities. I know. It has to take a bit of seconds to <laughs> think about that. Explain the fascination of bears. They are just the most humbling, awesome, terrifying creature on the planet. Just extraordinary. And I'd seen an awful lot of bears in Alaska, in Canada. I'd seen big grizzlies. I'd seen black bears in Russia, whatever. The, the polar bear just dwarfs them all. It is this huge, beautiful animal. So you found this documentary yourself. You set yeah. out to make this documentary, yeah. making your, your own money. And... It start with my own money. You yeah. can't relate to that, can you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've got plenty of it. <laughs> It, it started literally with me, want, you know, one of the things I always wanted to do, literally before you die, is see a polar bear. And I, I wanted to get up close or whatever. And I rang a mate of mine, Martin, and I said, what's the best place to get near them or whatever? And we talked about it. And there are places where lots of Americans go and you, you go up in a golf buggy and you go, hi, Mr. Bear, do you want a cake? And I mean, I thought, I don't want to do that. I want the real wild experience. We ended up about 400 miles south of the North Pole, a place called Svalbard, right at the top of Norway, where it's dark for six months of the year. I mean, and there was all that side there as well, and, and the people we met. So we travelled, and then I said, well, we might as well photograph it and, and, and do a book about it, which is what I've done. And then I thought, well, actually, we might as well take a couple of guys and do a, and, and do a film as well. They are um, elusive creatures, though, aren't they? As, just, your, as your film demonstrates. I mean, you have to look very hard for them. Yes, they don't come yes. out waving and saying, hey, not at, at all, not, no, not at all. all. I mean, <laughs> you always get a sense up there, and I think in, you, you get it in Alaska as well with the, with the grizzlies. You certainly get it with the polar bears, that they are there. And they talk about, like, the bears watching. You know, they're watching you... And where we land in Longyearbyen, there are, there, are, there are huge hills all around you, I mean, almost mountains. And you get the sense, that, I mean, as the planes arrive, it's like, oh, yippee, meals on wheels are here. As, as each little handful of tourists arrive. And they're up there licking their lips. But you don't see them. They are big, wild animals. I mean, we spent one whole day filming from a helicopter. I mean, some of the most stunning photography, just beautiful. But we only, at the end of it, saw that bear you saw the, all day. And there are two and a half thousand up there. What was they, the, hear, they hear it coming. What they was hear, the closest you got, though, to a, to a bear? Um... Well, you were about there, and if you sort of probably treble that, that's pretty close, Mike. And in what um, situation was it? What it was swimming. It, it, we actually went past it in a little inflatable boat. Always good idea having an inflatable when you're in polar bear country. Good wheeze. <laughs> um, and um, we, we literally went past it, and the sound guy said, look, and suddenly there was this colossal male polar bear, and he just ambled down this rock, got into the sea where we were, and we thought, we're going to die. Um, it, it, it makes this sort of snorting noise, which is basically back off. Yes. You know, stay yes. where you are, yes. go away, otherwise yes. I might eat you. Yes. Basically is what it's doing. Yes. And this thing came up towards us, and it, but, I mean, we filmed the whole lot, and it was, it was one of the greatest, genuinely one of the greatest afternoons of our life. But after it had gone, it sort of went back gently across to the far shore and shook itself like a big, massive dog. I mean, you're talking about an animal eight times as big as Lennox Lewis. I mean, that's what you're talking about. They are colossal, you know? Shook itself off. Um, <laughs> At that point, we thought, that was just breathtaking. And I did a piece of camera, and we went back towards the ship. And at that moment, the Eric, our idiot guy, a very nice man, but an idiot, started to row, and the, the oar touched the bottom. And actually, we thought we were in, like, 50 foot of water. We'd been in about two foot six. <laughs> At any point, Mr. Bear could have got up and gone, Ah! <laughs> Which is why I'm here talking to you today. Eric was your, gu your guy. He was a waste of he, space. He, 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 was, he, had a he had a gun. He had a gun. And there is a wonderful point where he says, uh, I have seen many bears. I have never luckily had to shoot one. If it came to it, I don't think I could. 
said Eric reassuringly. <laughs> but tell me, one of the weird things was, this, when we landed, the guy said, go through the various things about passports and documentation, whatever, have you got a shotgun? And I went, well, no, I haven't got a shotgun license, you know, whatever. If you leave town, you'll need a gun. And I was going, well, I didn't, I didn't pack one in between me, you know, my socks and my toothbrush. <laughs> and, the guy, yeah, this is and the guy says, don't worry, you can go and get one from the shop. And it's as simple as that. And you go down the shop, a hundred kroner a day, which is about nine quid, you can hire a gun that will kill a polar bear, right? You could buy one for 90 quid. So there's me and the crew all kitted up with these guns. God knows what we'd have done if a bear had come the other way. You know, no idea. But I mean, of course, there was a time, as you point out in, in your book and in your commentary, that uh, these were, the shooting bears were sport. Horrible. And, and one day a man shot 40 bears. Yes. One man shot 40 yeah. bears. I'll be very proud of that. No. I mean, you look at them and like, they're such majestic creatures. You couldn't kill them. No, you couldn't. I mean, you couldn't. And, and, and I mean, even worse, they, they poisoned a lot. I mean, it's part of the hunting thing. They poisoned them. Yes. And I, it was just like, you know, poisoned seal meat was left. And, and many of them, sort of bit it and swallowed it and, and weren't caught and ran off and died. The most awful lingering death. All that stopped, actually. I mean, all that stopped. What about the other, the other wildlife up there? Because it's not exclusive well, to polar bear. But <laughs> <laughs> that's out of the book, actually, but tell that's me about it if there's a chapter. Yeah. But the caribou, I thought, that was an interesting story. Well, you see... No. You, you... The intrepid explorer. Well, no, because I'm, because I'm a big uh -huh. lad. I'm six foot two or whatever. And, and you know, this will surprise you, but I'm actually a very gentle, nimble mover, if I need to be. You see, I see disbelief in your eyes. No, no, I've, I've seen you on the cricket field. I well, know exactly. that what you say is true. So, we spotted, Martin and I, the photographer and I, spotted this caribou, and it was like about 100 yards away. Now, a long time ago, we tried to photograph caribou up in the Northwest Territories in Canada, and they just keep spooking. They, they sent you and they spook. And I said, very quietly, get out of the car, close the door like that, whatever you do, you know, don't make a noise, and we'll get as close as we can. Big long lens and all that. So we do this about 100 yards, and I'm going, come on. So we do this, and we get to about 50 yards, and I think it's going to spook, take everything you can, and like that horrible shutter noise, and all this. So we get about 10 yards further, and eventually I reach out and I stroke it. Oh. <laughs> and it just sort of moves off. And I thought, that was fantastic. What a tribute to my skills as a stalker. <laughs> I was so impressed. I thought that was really, you know, graceful and cool. The next day we saw it in the town with children on its back doing rides. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Uh, now, how much of this trip, this change of direction that you made, a profound change of direction, was due to a kind of midlife crisis that men go through, if you like? <laughs> was, that, was that part of it? No, not really. Um, I mean, I've always had the other side of me. You I mean, I'm that. still as mad as a trumpet, but I've... <laughs> how, how, much, how much I know that your, your, your dad, for instance, your, who you, you've we talk, talked about before on the mm. program, that he died recently, too. I wonder how much it was, again, something like escaping from that kind of grief, if you like. I mean, was I that think... a... I think Dad actually taught me uh, my love of nature. I mean, he was, and my granddad were very much part of that. And, and obviously, this year, without my father, it's been, it's been awful, actually. I mean, I haven't really properly grieved. I haven't had time to grieve. And I'm not very good at that stuff. And I miss him well, hugely. Is, I mean, I keep yeah. wanting to reach out to the phone and have a chat, and I think, oh, no, he's not there and stuff, you know? Yeah. But I don't think... Um, I mean, that side of it's tough, and Christmas I'm dreading, frankly. But I don't think that's affected a change of direction. I'm still doing Millionaire. I'm still doing mad Japanese clips on Tarrant on TV and stuff. I'm just, I mean, I'm just doing another aspect of myself as well. Millionaire is hugely successful. Mm. I mean, I mean uh, uh, extraordinarily successful. But it, it leads to that kind of, uh, of, of recognition that you get, and that kind of very familiar way of catchphrases and things like that. Well, I've always had that. I mean, even from Tiswell's. You have used to come up to me when I was doing Tiswell's and say, Hello, Chris, got a custard pie in your pocket? Like, <laughs> yes, I always carry one of those. So it's, it's, I mean, and with the catchphrases of millionaire, I mean, sure, everywhere I go, every day, somebody will shout out, Hello, Chrissy, can I find a friend? <laughs> you know, you're the first person who's ever said that to me. <laughs> I mean, there's a great one. Now, last summer, and this is, you know that thing about we take the check, and, well, we don't want to give you that and all this stuff, and go 50-50 and ask the audience and all that stuff. So last summer, on a really hot day, uh, I wanted a beer, which is not like me. Uh, I wanted a beer. <laughs> the pub was looking quite busy or whatever. And I thought, well, I'm so desperate for a, for a drink, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go and have a, have a beer, whatever, however crowded it is, whatever. So I wandered in, and one or two people sort of do the old classic double takes, whatever, but it was fine, and the landlord sort of... Get, oh, you'll know this. I mean, there's a, there's a sort of look that landlords and taxi drivers people give you. It's like, I know who you are, but I'm not going to disturb your, your peace, whatever, right? So, so there's one of those. So he's pouring out this pint, and my lips are just dribbling. I'm thinking, I want this beer so badly. And it gets right to the top, and there's a big layer of froth, and I'm thinking, oh, yes, please. And he holds it out like that, and he goes... Oh, we don't want to give you that. <laughs> Who pours it in the slop bucket? Oh, 
Oh! Oh, how I laughed! Oh, how I went! I can, I think that's... So I shook him warmly by the windpipe. <laughs> Oh. You've answered my question. That's why you went in search of the, the, the polar bear. Yeah, you mean anyway. a nicer class of person? I think you do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shout silly things at you. Just extraordinary. All right. Now, what else have you got? You've got another trip planned, haven't you? Thinking about it? I'm hoping next year, um, if this is successful, I'm hoping next year to do either, um, either orangutans in Sumatra or I'd love to do the gorillas in Rwanda. Oh. It's a good life, mate. Chris Tarrant, thank you very much indeed. Bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.